How many of you would love to get to a point where you can at least have one good week out the month? Let's let me see your hand. One good week out the month. Right? One good. And again, y'all know I'm a pastor, so I get to hear a lot of conversations, and I just don't hear enough Christian conversations. Like I don't hear enough, we're gonna build this, we're gonna change this, we're gonna impact this. I just hear people talking about people. There's a lot of people talking about people and talking about stuff they don't like and dogging people out. And I'm not mad at you for it. I'm just saying that's low-hanging fruit. Like those are not the conversations that Christians should be having. I was in a remote spot. It's 32, 33 people in the world. They all New York Times bestsellers. They all trying to change the world. Oh, I'm sorry. One dude was like, I'm here to make money. He's like, I'm not here for impact. You know what I'm saying? He was like, I'm not saying I'm not going to impact, but I ain't here for that. I'm trying to get paid. I was like, hey, well, praise God. You're telling the truth. The rest of us was about impact first and then everything else second. And so I want you to get to a point where even listen to your conversations. All right, let's go into the word. Anybody remember... I've been talking about, there's two things I've been saying. There are two things. There, and anybody remember, if you're online, you could put it in the chat, but there's these two F words I've, I've said. And can anybody shout those out for me real quick? Can anybody say it in the audience? Good. And we know that biblically the Bible says God does not have any. We're all his. He's not a respecter of person. Amen. But there are those he, he favors. And that's where you want to be. All right, I, I say this every time. Forgive me. Act like I've never said it before, right? But I just love saying it, right? So, so I, don't, I remember when I was in detention. I got put in detention a lot. And my boy Bob, he had turned me on to the Bible um, when we were in high school. And so when I was in detention, I used to read the Bible. And so my thing was, I was going to try to read Genesis to Revelation. And so that of all the stuff that I've ever read, there are a couple stories that stand out, right? Uh, a few of them that like, I was just like, wow. So the first one I told you was Joshua. When the Bible says that wherever he put his foot, God was like, yo, do me a favor. Be careful. This is the God of the universe having a conversation with his son, Joseph, Joshua. He has a relationship with Joshua. He said, Joshua, do, do me a favor. Be careful where you walk because wherever you walk is going to be blessed. <laughs> when I read that, I was like, what I got to do to get that? Like, what do I have to do that everything I put my hands on, whether it's APOC, whether it's ETA, Right? Whatever it is, whether it's school days, basketball, like whatever it is that I put my hands on, God, what do I have to do for us to be winners? I want to do that. Like Joshua was at a point in his life, watch this, y'all. Y'all might have missed it because it's like, you know, it's kind of like Old Testament. You might have missed it. God didn't say, I'm going to bless whatever your foot touch. He said, be careful where you go because whatever your foot touch is going to be blessed. That's a whole nother level. God was like, you so blessed, it's beyond my control. It's beyond my control. I can't even, I can't control your blessings no more. So I'm going to have to tell you, be, res, be responsible where you go. Because if you go to the Euphrates and you go back over to the, that's all yours. Wherever you go, be careful because it's going to be a lot. So be careful where you put your foot. Be careful who you associate yourself with. Because even if they ain't dope, they're going to be dope because they're associated with you. That was my prayer. So when you see certain things and you like, oh, I see each. No, that was my prayer. I was like, Joshua, I don't want to read this in the Bible. I want to be this. I'm not interested. Some of y'all just want to read the word and debate and be like our church is the best church since sliced bread. And we this and we that. I'm not interested. I want to be. I'm not interested in proving no church over no church. I'm not interested in that. I want to be. And then the other thing I read was Enoch walked and talked with God till he was no more. And so every morning when I get up and I go pray, I just be like, God, I love this world, but if you could just take me, that'd be dope. If you just leave a letter with my people, let them know I, ain't, I didn't die, though. I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't, I didn't commit suicide or nothing like that. It's just me and you got so dope that I just was up out of here. Those are the two things that I read. I was like, yo, how did you talk to God that much that not only did you enjoy talking to God, but God enjoyed talking to you that he didn't even want you to die. He wanted you to come straight to heaven. And so forgive me, but that's just what I'm on. I'm not on religion. Like, I'm not interested. Let, let the religious folk have, a, you know, debates and all that. I'm not interested. I just want to embody it. Hey Amen. I like Barry Sanders. I want to be like Barry Sanders. Barry Sanders used to be scoring all the time. He wasn't dancing. He wasn't doing nothing. He just was scoring. You know what I'm saying? He was just running up the numbers. I don't even need to, like, dance. I don't need nobody to recognize. Barry didn't need no recognition. He just wanted to. He, he just, his craft. 
He just wanted to be the best as the best. And I just really want to be a friend of God and get the benefits that come with being a friend of God, not being a Christian. I'm not even interested in Christianity. Sometimes I don't even want the same. I'm like, bro, that's what, like if that's what we all getting clumped into. I'm good on that. Don't even call me that. Some dude hit me the other day and was like, yo, bro, I thought you was a Christian. I was like, oh, okay, I am. What's wrong? You know what I'm saying? He DM'd me. I thought you was a man of God. I was like, I am. What does that mean exactly? Also, oh, how you got Mustafa? He a Muslim. How you got him working with you? I was like, Moose is more Christian than most Christians that I know. I was like, bro, you don't even want to go there, bro. I promise you, you don't. Mustafa is more, more and he, he Muslim, yeah, but he more Christian. In his Muslimness, he more Christians than most Christians. He ain't, he ain't just saying he a Christian. Oh, he a Muslim. He not just saying, listen to what I'm trying to tell y'all. Make sure you catch this. I, my man tried to check me. <laughs> I thought you was a Christian. How you hanging with, how you got a Muslim on your team making decisions with you? Because this Muslim is more Christian than most Christians that I know. When you talk, when you strip it and you talk values, he really living it. Moose really living with integrity. Moose really say he is who he says he is. Hey, does that make sense? Hallelujah. Amen. Anybody ready to get in the word so you can get blessed and so you can bless God? There's two things. Anybody ready to get blessed? So you can, all right. So we've been talking about favor and how you get favor. And last week, the word that we talked about was, somebody put it in the chat for me. What was the word? It was a C word. Conviction. On three, everybody say that. One, two, three. Come on, one, two, three. All right, now we're going to go to John three sixteen, and I'm going to show y'all something. Here's what I love about God. He, he can make the claims that he makes because he's already done everything he's asking you to do. You feel me? Like, I really do have a problem, and I had to pray about it. I, have, I, I had a problem, right? I had a problem. I had a problem with people checking me on stuff that they don't even know how to do it. And God was like, chill, son. If I tell them to correct you, don't worry about it. It's all good. I'm like, God, they don't even speak. How are they going to tell me how to speak? I'm just being real. That's what I'll be on. Like, how you critiquing me? You don't even know. Like, I've been doing this thing for almost, I've been doing it over 30 years. Like, how you going to tell? You ain't even been on stage. You just sitting in the pit. Let's watch and listen. If, if, I, if I were you, I'd make that. You ain't me. And God was like, chill, son. Relax. <laughs> Get a little feedback. Your wife is blessed. She has the gift. Even though she's never spoken, she has the gift of feedback. It's okay. It's okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. I'm sorry. I was just saying, there's people who critique my speaking. Amen. They critique my speaking. I'm like, Lord, they ain't never done this. They've never been on stage. God. He's like, chill. They, got the, they have the gift of feedback. I've given them a gift. It's okay. All right. right. And so the reason why we can rock with God, because everything he's ever asked us to do, he's already done it. So watch what, he, watch what he says as it relates to conviction. For God so loved the world, this is what he said his values are. He said he loved us, right? That's easy to say. For God so loved the world. Now here's where the conviction come in, that he gave his only begotten son. That's the conviction. Like, yo, you can say all day, I have people tell me, I'm loyal to you. What does that mean? Does that mean you're loyal when I do everything you want me to do? Everything you think I should do, when I don't do what you think I should do, now you got to add to That's not loyal. That's a commitment. And you can, I told y'all before, I'm com- I am committed to running a marathon. <laughs> I'm committed. <laughs> I got a little closer to conviction this week, <laughs> but I'm committed to it, which means what? That, it, it, that when you tell me to run six miles on Monday, six miles Tuesday, I may or may not do it. Now, I am convicted about the long runs. I'm going to get the four. Last week was 14 miles. This week is 15. I tried to do it this morning, but got home at midnight. I'm like, it ain't going to work today. I got one more day. Tomorrow, Lord, please, let it be tomorrow. Let it be today. Right? So I'm, so I'm committed to it, but I don't know that I'm convicted yet. I got in my run this morning. Absolutely. Just before church. That's why I came in here a little bit late. I'm, co- I'm, I'm, I'm committed, but I don't know that I'm convicted. And here's what I want y'all to know. We have to be careful because some of us get an attitude because we're looking for things that people who are convicted get when we just committed. And then we like we looking at God. Why is this person getting favor and I'm not getting favor? He said they got a conviction. You just got a commitment, meaning that when I do what you want me to do, we good. But when I don't do what you want me to do, we not good. This is a conviction. Why? Because it took two people to do this. 
and one person said it and made the uh, was convicted about it, the other one was like, uh, I pray this cup passes me. They didn't both have the same energy on the 316 boy. Just want you to be clear on that. For God so loved the world. It ain't say nothing about Jesus. It said, for God so loved the world that he gave. Now the one that was given was like, uh, can we find another way to do this? I'm just being real. One of them was like, for God so loved the world. He gave, he put him on earth. But when it came time to the real deal, holy field, the one that had to be sacrificed was like, whoa. I don't know. I'm telling you, look, it's, you're not evil. You don't have to be shame. But I just want you to stop expecting what people with convictions have when you just commit it. Stop doing that. Because now you mad. Like, oh, okay, so coach ain't going to start me. You not as com- you just committed. You ain't got no conviction to the game. You just play when it's time to play. That person is up all day, every day, running, lifting weight. Michael Jordan was convicted about basketball. Kobe was convicted about basketball. That's why Mike is who he is. Not because he was the greatest ever, but the conviction that's like, you, that, that, that nobody wanted as bad as he wanted. He was convicted. Jesus was like, okay, look, uh, 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 Father, I know what you said in John 3, 16. Can we rewrite that? Can we make up a sacrifice? Can we send one of the angels? Three times. We know it. Not once, not twice. But on the third time, what do we see? We see despite his feelings. He didn't let it. Some of us, we let our feelings like I ain't feeling it. I'm not with it. That's what happened. That's why I know I'm not convicted to running because I always run when I feel like it. I ain't never missed a day when I felt like it. I felt like doing that 14 last week. I felt it. I've never run though when I've not felt it. That's when it's been tough. It's like, we're going to take today off. We get five days, only two. We get two off five days. It's funny. I always take the first two days off. I only run because I don't have no more free days. <laughs> I'm talking to somebody. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This is a, this is a, this is a, a command. God is saying, if you believe in me, you good. I already gave my, I'm asking you today. Let's go to this. I want to show y'all something. This one is deep. This is a principle. So I'm going to take you into favor. So if you want If you want to go in a favor, one of the things you have to do is operate in conviction and not commitment. And the only reason why you have to do that is because you have to match the energy of the Savior. I'm I'm, I'm sorry, but that's just how it is. So the Savior said, I sent my only begotten son. I made the ultimate sacrifice. So you can't come into this relationship giving me what you want to give me. Cain and Abel, we miss it. The brother gave a sacrifice, y'all. He, that, he didn't, it wasn't like he didn't give nothing. We always want to act like the brother didn't give nothing. He gave something. He just didn't give what God asked. You can't decide what you want to give and what you don't want to give. You don't make that decision. God says, I gave my only begotten son. I'm about to show you how this thing works. You don't give me half. You don't give me 75%. You find the very best that you have and you give me that and watch what I give you. You don't give me what you want to give me. You don't give me the time you got left. You don't give me the money you got after you do everything you're supposed to do. You don't give me your energy after you gave it to everybody else. That's not how this thing works. I'm not asking you for something that I didn't do. For God so loved that he gave and you tripping on why my marriage ain't, you ain't convicted. Why is my company not? Y'all ain't convicted. You committed at best. And so when you get committed stuff, don't trip. So here's what we do. We go, once the God-given gifts match the God-ordained values, boom, we're going to make it happen. So I just want to give y'all one principle today. We riding off of our gifts, but I realize that those who are favored ride off their values. And so what I mean by that is we play around with our taxes because we believe that it's in the taxes that we're going to be blessed, not in the values. So we got values until it's tech, tax time. 
And then when tax come, we start playing these games. And God's like, oh, it looked like you got a way of doing it outside of my values. Go for it. You want to be manipulative? Go right ahead. But just know something. You won't commit me now. So now I'm going to let it be 50-50. I might show you grace. I might let the way you did. I, I might let the way you doing it. I might let that be your God. Huh? I keep trying to tell y'all Chick-fil-A ain't Chick-fil-A because of the sandwich. Chick-fil-A, one of the best restaurants in the world, fast food restaurants in the world. They don't even have a whole bunch of franchises. They will not put their franchises in the city. Period. You don't see no whole bunch of on 8 Mile. You don't see no Chick-fil-A on 8 Mile. You don't see no Chick-fil-A on 7 Mile. You don't see no Chick-fil-A on Finkel. Why? They have a value system. What's the value system? Southern hospitality. We don't do this. We don't go off on people. We don't pop off. You don't pop off and you ain't never been to Chick-fil-A and they popped off on you. That's a hood. That's a McDonald's thing. I know because me and my boys used to jump the counter. We had five Finkel in Wyoming. That McDonald's, I promise you, Friday, Saturday, it was like the Wild Wild West. Folk, we pulling our gun, cats jumping the counter. We throwing grease on it. We got the spats. We, it was the Wild Wild West. Anybody from Detroit know? Finkel in Wyoming. I worked there for three years. It was the Wild Wild West. We was open 24 hours. Cats coming in with masks. My manager waiting on them. Yep, come on. We had fun. Yep, come on in with the mask. Yep, you got a gun. We got guns too. Chick-fil-A like we can't operate in that kind of chaos. <laughs> we can't do that. It was, it was customary in the city. Somebody going to jump there. You see it on TikTok all the time. People jumping the counter. People getting into it. You don't see that at Chick-fil-A. Why? They not on money. They on values. And because they operate in values... They still beating people who got 20 more restaurants. They still beating people that's got 20 more items on the... <laughs> All they sell is chicken. They ain't got 50 things, but they got value and chicken. I'm trying to tell you, you're trying to blow up on your gift. You're trying to blow up on your little ideas. You're trying to blow up. You blow up with values. And God had a value. I love my baby so much, even though they messed up. I love my baby so much. I'm so committed to humanity. Jesus, you got to go and die for them. I'm committed and convicted when it comes to humanity. And I'm willing to lose my only begotten son. I'm, lo I'm willing to lose a part of the Godhead for them. You think that you're going to give God half when he gave you everything? It don't work like that. You don't get to choose. You don't get to decide. He already said it for God. Don't play with your taxes. I got you. I got this. Don't play with your money. Don't make it like you got. Don't put no fake check when you ain't got. You got me for God. For the Lord is thy shepherd. Thou shalt not want. You're not going on values. You don't, you don't trust me. That's the problem. You don't trust me. The problem, you don't trust me. You're going to try to do it your way. After your way has not worked. So what I'm trying to show you is, when you start going values, boom. And it's hard, y'all. It's hard. So my wife this morning, yeah, there was something urgent that she needed to get done. It was something urgent. And when she said, we need to do it, when she first said it, I felt, I was like, oh, do we need God? Do we need to do this? And he was like, yeah, you need to do it. And I said, why do I feel this way then? He said, you feel this way because you're more convicted when it comes to part of my work. That's really not my work, but it's the people. And you're not as convicted as you are with your wife. And I was like, oh, okay. So he said, here's what you need to do for me. You just need to do what she asked you to do. And you need to cancel the work that you have to do with the church that they're going to be okay. I was like, okay, God, but we had, and they had, he was like, mm -mm, that's the problem. You, you are convicted with a group of people that you shouldn't be convicted with. It, that's not, that, I don't need you to do that. You, your wife has been with you for 34 years. You need to be convicted to your wife. So even though it seems like it's a spiritual thing, it's nothing as spiritual as she is. Because when I hold you accountable, I won't be holding you accountable for a meeting that you do uh, on Zoom. I won't be counting you or judging you based on how you manage my daughter. So I need you to do me a favor. I need you to leave your gift 
to be able to train and develop alone. And I need you to focus on what you value. So they're going to be okay. They're not going to die. Call Danita and tell her to cancel it. But what you will not do is put them first anymore. What you will do is put her first first. And when we start doing value stuff and not the other stuff, then that's how we walk into favor. Oh, y'all miss what I just said. I'm going to say it one more time. It wasn't a bad thing that I was doing. It just wasn't the godly thing I was doing. Like I never stood up here with uh, the Zoom call. In sickness, I do. In health, I do. <laughs> for richer or for poor, for richer or for poor, I do. God said, you ain't never had no Zoom call that you, that you stand up here in front of witnesses and me and the angels. Said, no, but you did that with your wife. I need you to put your, I need you to get, I need you to start on our values. You on your gift, the gift of shepherding, the gift of leadership. Leave your gift alone and get in your values. Amen. Praise God. All right, let's go. All right, let's go. We got to go. All right, come on. It's late. We got to go. All right, I'm going to help somebody. So I messed up last week, right? So I was like, are you, com- are, co- are you convicted to God? God told me to tell you, I shouldn't have asked you about a conviction of God. I should have asked you about your personal conviction. God told me to tell you, most of us in this room, we're not even committed to ourselves. No, no, I just want you to I, listen to me very close. You got to check this out. You can't go to somebody and ask them for $100,000 when all they make is $65,000 a year. You can't do it. It doesn't make them a bad person. It, they, they, they have $65,000 that they make a year. Take out taxes, they probably got 30 thousand, And then they got a whole bunch of bills and responsibilities. It's not fair for you to ask them to give you $100,000 when they're making $65,000 a year. It's not fair. Here's what God told me to tell you. It wasn't fair for me to ask you to make a spiritual conviction when you've not made a personal one to yourself. <laughs> Somebody asked me, ET, what, how you, the marathon, how you could, I said, bro, I'm just going to be real with you. I'm really not running a marathon. What I'm running is values. I said, I was at the podcast. This is what happens when you are a learner. I'm sitting there and Jamal started talking about how he had a vision for his body when he was in college and that he vowed he would always weigh the same amount of weight, uh, the same weight. I guess he was at 212 or something like that and that he was going to live at. And now he in his 40s and he's still 212. And he talked about how he wanted his body to look. And as he was saying, I was like, God, I've never, ever had a vision for my body. I've always just let my body do whatever it wanted to do. I was just being real. Like I always thought it would be like whatever it was, that's what it's going to be. You know what I'm saying? Like I never really had no problems like with a whole, like a whole bunch of weight, but you know, a little weight then I would do something and I would fix it. And I was look, and then I was like, Ooh, God, that's the problem. I've never made a, I've never been convicted with your body is the temple of the living God. It is the temple of the Holy Ghost. I never, I never, I read that before, but I was never convicted when I read it. I thought he was talking about spiritual and boy, if I had a spiritual co- conviction, getting up at three o'clock in the morning, praying for years on the call with a bunch of dudes for over 20 years, praying, uh, going to church. I don't miss church, reading my Bible. I don't, I'm just I'm spiritual, but I never had a conviction to my body. I never rested. I never went on vacation. I never took a trip and went on a vacation. I never just shut my brain down. I never told people, no, I can't do that. Because if I do that for you, I'm taking something away from my wife. I can't give you her time. I I never was convicted on some of the other stuff. And God is saying, you got to get convicted. You're giving people your wife's time. You're giving away your family's money. No, stop doing that. Does it mean I don't give away money? Nope. Now I got a foundation. And the government has a way for you to either pay taxes to Uncle Sam or to bless your foundation. So when you call, I need money. You can't take money from my personal family no more. Why? I don't know how long I'm going to be alive. So I got to make sure that everything that is belongs to Didi goes to Didi. And so I have an accountant to help me, three accountants to help me to do that. Am I making sense? God told me to tell you some of us, we are not where we want to be today. And no, we have not made a conviction to God, but you ain't made one to yourself. I'm going to show y'all what that looks like real quick. Let's go. I'm going to show you what that looks like. Joshua 24 and 15. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for, your, choose for yourself this day who you will serve, whether it's the gods of your ancestors beyond the Euphrates 
or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But for me, personal conviction. (laughs) Joshua said, listen to me very closely. Like, y'all do whatever y'all want to do. Y'all grown. I'm not here to tell nobody what to do, but let it be known today throughout the land that as for me, I've made a personal conviction and for my household. (laughs) Oh, y'all better be careful because what happens is the conviction we make is the conviction they make. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. The conviction we make is the conviction they make. If we not praying, they not praying. I I promise y'all, I used to laugh and be like, Jalen, I'm telling you, son, like you got to take prayer serious. You see me getting up at three o'clock. You got to pray. He said, dad, you don't got to tell me to get up to pray at three o'clock in the morning. I got up every day at three o'clock when you got up. I said, bro, you wasn't up. He says, dad, when you hit the garage, my bedroom was right above the garage, dad. Every time you'd open that garage at three o'clock in the morning, you wake me up too. And I knew exactly what you was doing. So no, I might not have got out of bed like you got out of bed, but I did talk to the Lord because you interrupted my sleep. Are you not hearing what I'm saying? I'm not, you're not hearing what I'm saying. If you ain't committed to God, your household probably ain't going to be committed to God. Your household may not be committed to God because you committed to the God, but they definitely ain't going to be committed to God if you ain't committed to God. Huh? You're saying like, yo, why we ain't doing this and why y'all ain't doing that? I'm telling y'all, man, I almost fell out when God revealed to me that your wife is only going to do what you do. I almost fell out. I was like, come on, God. Diddy strong, Diddy this, Diddy that. He's like, mm-mm, none of that matters. If you doing what you're supposed to do and you got your arm up, all of Israel wins. When your arm falls, all of Israel loses. The oil falls down from it. She is not as strong as you think she is. She is as strong as you are spiritually. I said, that's a lot of pressure, guys. He said, well, that's what it is. So be careful what you do. Be careful what you do to me and how you do what you do to me because they following what you do. Don't get it twisted. They know your anointing. They know your sins. They know your fault. They know if you really love me or not. They, they watching you. <laughs> Come on, y'all not hearing what I'm saying. I'm saying to you that they would be more convicted if you was more convicted and we're watching each other's non-convictions and we're following we watching for all of us who are leaders. Yo, they, they watching. They watching where you compromise and they like, oh, you compromise? Then we compromising. Oh, you convicted? Then we convicted. Oh, you not hear what I'm saying. I know I got to hurry up, but I want you to catch this one. You can stop complaining and you can just start being convicted. And once you're convicted, you're going to get paid what convicted people get. You can stop saying how loyal you are and show it. You can stop saying how committed you are. Those are usually terms of people who are not convicted because you're trying to prove how committed you are. You don't have to prove how committed you are. The proof is in the pudding. Trust me. Whether people give you your credit or they don't give you your credit. Amen. My wife told me there's some people that's been working for the company for 10 years. I'm like, wow, God, I've never acknowledged that. Trust me, God has. God ain't waiting on Eric to acknowledge all his employees and his staff. I promise you God is blessing people accordingly. So let's just, let's, let's see what it looks like in the flesh before I let y'all get out of here. Uh, Listen to me. Rebecca had three ACL tears in four years. Listen to me. She had three. How many did I say? Not. Or she had three in four years. If you don't know what, what, if you don't know what an ACL tear is, it takes, like, you don't get an ACL tear and you can start training tomorrow. You have one. How long did it take you to heal? Two years to heal. So three ACL tears. Three. And she was in the Olympics representing Brazil. And on the vault, sister girl, listen to me very close. I know this is hard to believe. I know this is hard to believe. But she outdid everybody in the Olympics. Yeah, I know who you're thinking. Uh, absolutely not. I know what you're thinking. Yeah, and, and, and the individual boy, she was neck and neck with her until like the last, <laughs> it took the last boy <laughs> for her to get it. It took the last boy. Rebecca was on her head. With three ACL tears, she still won the silver and was only a few points away from winning the gold. That's conviction. 
She could have said, hey, I got an ACL tear. I'm out. She could have said, I got one. I'm going to try. She got two. She could have been like, after the two, I'm out. Two, I'm out. After the second, she, after the third one, nobody would have nobody would have judged her for going out on the third one. She said, absolutely not. My mama was a single parent. She had multiple kids. They sent me to uh, uh, sent me away to go train. This is for all the marbles. I don't care how many ACL tears I'm going to get. We are going to compete for the individual and the team go. Period. It's conviction. We get one injury. We out for the count. And I'm not even talking about physically right now. I'm talking about mentally and spiritually. We get one setback. Oh, God. So you just going to forsake me? Oh, God. I've been doing this, this, this is for you. And you, where are you, God? God was like, I just wanted to see. I'm, I just let you get a tear just to see. I just see your mouth, to see your commitment. You don't forget, you was the one that came up to the altar. God, I'm committed to you. I'm convicted. He said, Okay, let me throw you a test. Yeah, let's see. I, 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 I don't. I wasn't. I, it ain't on me. I sent my only begotten son. I didn't renege. I didn't renege. You reneging because things ain't going your way. Now all of a sudden, you showing your true color, and I see your true color shining through. I see your true colors. God said, I see your true colors. A trial or a tribulation hit, and now you're wondering if I'm going to do what I said I'm going to do, so now you're going to switch the game up. Okay. I just wanted to see if you was, no, I wanted you to see. And I didn't want you to see to put it in your face. I want you to see where you are so you can make the adjustment. Because everything I got for you, I got for you. Let me just tell y'all this. She is the most decorated um, athlete in Brazil. That it's something comes with conviction. So when she go home to Brazil, she ain't got to pay for nothing to do nothing. When she get off the plane, she can't go nowhere. She is the most decorated athlete in Brazil. Why? Because of her conviction. Not only did she get silver, when she go home, they're going to remember the three ACL boys and you didn't quit and you didn't give up. And so you put our name on the map. You had our flag and you was walking around with our flag on. You gave us honor. God said, when you going to shut up and when you just going to flag me out and when you going to run around and show me the flag and when you going to put the flag down and when you going to speak up for me and when you going to show off for me and when you going to let people know it don't matter what happened. I'm, he's, I, I, I still got his back. Because he had mine. I'm still flying the flag. He still got. That's what it's about, y'all. When you get gold, everybody stand there and everybody get to go. But more importantly, they play your song. They lift up your country. God says, when you going to lift me up? I've lifted you up. When you going to lift me up? When this relationship going to be mutual? Why is it always about you? Why is it all about what you always want? When you going to raise the flag for me? When you going to tell everybody what I did for you? Let's go, let's go, let's go. Question I got for you. Do, do, do you. do you feel a strong sense of purpose and direction in your life that aligns with your core values? Now watch this, y'all. Watch this. This is a prediction. Chick-fil-A about to fall off. This is a prediction. They about to fall off. They're not about to be as strong as they once were. Really, it's not a prediction. I should be, I'm lying. I'm sorry, God. It's not a prediction. It's, it, they already went from one to three. Why? Because when daddy died, they started moving away from the values. No, no, go look, go look, go look. After daddy died, now they're not really tripping on the type of chicken they serve you. When dad was alive, dad was like, I don't care how much more money we can make. We're not giving them that type of chicken. We're only giving them the best of the best chicken. Daddy been gone for a minute now, and they try to, they maybe is acting like they were still on what daddy was on, but now they moved away and was like, as of July 1st, we were no longer selling that type of chicken. Anybody, it ain't no telling what's going to be in your stuff. It ain't. <laughs> we stepping away from that. Come on, somebody. Are you listening to me? And now we got some of our restaurants and places that are like right on the borderline of where daddy didn't want them. Oh, I'm just being real, y'all. Just pay attention to when daddy died and now you're starting to see Chick-fil-A's pop up everywhere. When daddy was alive, daddy was like, here go the value. And they was number one without a bunch of, I just want to ask you, is your purpose in life and your core values align 
Or when stuff start going wrong, you start compromising your values for that dollar. Or you just going to trust God. Say, God, come on, you either going <laughs> to, is you is or is you ain't. <laughs> and you let God step up and show who he is. This is his chance. This is his opportunity to shoot his three. This is his chance to hit a grand slam out the park. If there was no opportunities for him to hit a grand slam, how are you going to show he God? It's going to always look like he's you. So there are times that he allows things to happen so he can show up and show out. Let's go to the next one. Do, how do I respond when my beliefs are questioned or opposed? Do I remain firm or do I waver? No, this is a question. Go back, go back. Because we about to leave. I don't want to mess y'all up. Do, do, do I feel a strong sense of purpose and direction or am I just chasing the bag? I love the devil. The devil's like, look, I can't take your gifts from you. I can't. I can't take your spouse from you. I can't take your kids from you. I can't take the gifts that God has given you. I can't take the promises for you, but I can't get you unfocused. I can't have you chasing the bag. Of all the things that God gave you, I can have you chasing the low hanging fruit. Because if you chase your values and you chase your purpose, you kill me, but I'm going to just, I'm going to, I, I, I want you to see that. I want you to think you ain't that dope. You ain't that gifted. You ain't that talented. We're just going to let one challenge or trial come. And when that one challenge or trial come, I'm going to make you go back to your old ways because you ain't really about that life. I'm just going to throw a challenge at you. I'm going to throw an economic challenge at you. And then you're going to find yourself right back. Why? Because you ain't about what you said you was about. Y'all got to understand something, y'all. The devil is our enemy. The devil is like, God, I told you that joker wasn't about nothing. Can't nothing about him coming to the altar. Do you know that the Bible says that the devil goes back and forth? He, he said Job ain't about that life. Why you running around here talking about Job like he all that? You talking about Job to all these people. You running around with a flag on Job. Job this, Job that. Job did. Job ain't about nothing, God. Here, between me and you, take everything my man got and see what he do. See where his values are. Watch he start whining and complaining. Watch he give up. Watch he start talking negative. Watch, 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 watch. I took his stuff first, and then he took his kids second, and then his wife said, hey, God, whack. Curse your God and die. And Job's response was, the Lord giveth. The Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm not doing this because of this. I'm doing this because of this. I'm convicted to God. I have a conviction. You could take my wife if you want to. You could take everything you want to take. I'm not committed to that. The devil has gone to God and said about you. They can come to the altar if they want to. They can sing if they want to. As soon as they get out of this church, God, they're going to go right back. They ain't convicted to you. They ain't about that life. Throw one trial at them, throw one tribulation at them, and watch they go back to doing that slick stuff. Watch they going back to their old ways. Watch they go back being manipulative. Watch and see that they don't follow your truth and follow your way. Question number two, how do I respond when my beliefs are questioned or opposed? Do I remain firm or do I waver? We're going we're gonna to look at this last one. I'm going to let you go. We're going to pray. We're going to get ready. We're going to pray. Four years of focused training. Plus a lifetime of training before oh, one event that lasts for four, 40 seconds, y'all. I'm, I'm sorry they didn't put my man's name up here. I, that's my fault. I don't know a little man's name. Here's what I know, though. He trained. He only did one. He only did one event in the Olympics with the men. Only one. And you know what the crazy part about it was? The men ain't won since like 2006, 2008. They ain't won a medal. My man had one job, one assignment. That was it. He'd been training for conviction. He'd been training for four years for one. He, he owned a little horse boy. I don't even know what he's doing. My man on the horse boy, doing his thing on the horse boy for 40 seconds. And when it was over, bah, he nailed it. And they won bronze. They hadn't, they hadn't been able to stand up and show the flag since maybe 2006, 2008, whenever that last one was. Them boys hadn't won nothing. And for four straight years, all he did, he ain't had no job, he ain't had nothing. All he did was practice, 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 practice. So guess what? After he nailed it and they got the bronze, when he come home, my man about to be on commercials, he about to get endorsements. Why? Because you get paid when you convicted. 
You get rewarded differently when you convicted. Four years, he practiced for something to take 40 seconds and he nailed it and he about to be blessed forever. Every four years, you're going to be saying my man's name. He's going to be commentating. He's going to be doing stories. He's going to be talking about how he practiced for four years for 40 seconds. Some of us can't do what God told us to do for four days before we get discouraged and ready to quit and give up. We're standing right now. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's go to this last one. Let's go to this one. I just want you to hear what it feels like, and I want you to get ready. For I'm convinced, Romans 8, 38, 39, I'm leaving you with this. If you want to be rewarded like those that are convicted, you got to be convicted. If you want to be committed, that's cool, but don't, don't get upset when you don't get what people who convicted get. When you don't get the life that they get, when you don't get the blessings they get. I want you to read, I want you to read this with me. For I'm convinced, this is, this is Paul, this on some conviction. I just want you to see scripturally what it looks like. I want you to read it every day if you're trying to figure it out. Paul said, I'm, I, for I am convinced, I'm convicted that neither death nor life, nor angels nor demons, nor the present nor the future. No, listen to me. He said, the past stuff that happened, that ain't about to get on my nerve. The stuff, all the stuff that could possibly happen, none of that, ain't none of that going to separate me. Ain't none of that going to make me talk different. Ain't none of that going to make me have a different kind of attitude. Ain't none of that. Paul's trying, Paul, don't get so caught up on the scriptures that you're missing it. I don't, I don't want you to miss it. Paul says that death ain't going to, death ain't going to separate me from, you hear me? Paul said death ain't going to separate me from God. When I die, I'm going to be with God. Death ain't going to separate me. Nor life, meaning the cares of this world are not going to keep me from having the type of relationship that convicted folks have. Neither angels, ain't no angel nor demon going to separate me. Neither the present nor the future. The, what I'm going through right now, what I could possibly go through. I'm not even going to be concerned with it. Why? Because nothing is going to be as important to me as God. I'm not going to let no bill distract me. I'm not going to let no phone call distract me. I'm not going to let no circumstance or situation distract me. I'm going to stop getting distracted by all this stuff because I'm going to be so focused on Christ that neither life nor death. Nothing shall separate me. That's different. When you see Michael Jordan play, you can see, like, I don't care about nobody. I'm locked in. All I want to do is win championships. Kobe had it. When we get to that point in our marriage, it's going to be different. When we get to that point in our business, it's going to be different. When we get to the place where we stop doing what we feel like and we walk into this spiritual realm of conviction that it does not matter what the senses feel like. I have made up in my mind that to live is Christ and to die is gain. Nor any powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation. Not a cow, not a pig, not a horse, not an eagle. All the things God created, not a mountain, not a river. Absolute. He went through the whole thing so you just, he wouldn't miss nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Meaning what? This is the model. I told y'all I'm convicted, so I'm bringing up Jesus Christ to show you I already paid my debt. You ready to pay yours? Must Jesus bear the cross alone? And the whole world get to do what they want to do when they want to do it. Huh? Must Jesus bear the cross alone? Or you only get to be a Christian when you feel like it. Must Jesus bear the cross alone? And when you feel like putting your Christianity to the side so you can tell somebody off, must Jesus bear the cross alone or you keep using excuses while you come out of your Christianity, while you come out of being what God called you to be to address a man? Must Jesus bear the cross alone and the whole world go free? You're in the room right now and you're like, yeah, I do love the Lord. I do love my life. I do love my wife. I love my kid. I love, but I, I, I'm not, I ain't on that convicted thing yet. And I need to get there. You're coming to the altar and you and God are making it. You and God are, you and God are having a conversation. And you're just saying, God, I just want to start the conviction boy. I just want to start it. Today, I want to start the conviction boy. You might be, you might, you might be committed already. You're like, I'm already committed. I don't need nothing. But I'm ready to go to that next level of conviction. I need to go to that next level. I need to be convicted where it don't matter 
It don't matter about this world and the things. It don't matter. I'm not doing it for this stuff. I'm not doing it to pay bills. I'm not doing it for no other human. I ask y'all do me a favor. If you're in the room and your husband or your spouse has come up, I need you to join them. Praise God. We're doing this together. No, no, I'm just trying to tell y'all. It's a different conviction. There are some things that you've been praying for, some things you've been hurting for. Can y'all come a little close? People behind you can come. There's some things, you're, you're, you're watching me right now. There's some things that you want, that God wants for you, but they don't come until you pay the price of conviction. They don't, they, they don't come. You're like, well, I paid. That don't come with this life. That's, that come with committed, where you get to do it when you feel like it, and when you don't feel like it, you don't have to do it. You're being rewarded for that already. I, you play sports. Bruh, coach ain't about to give you, and ain't no other team. Bruh, ain't no other team. I don't care what they say about you in the newspaper. I don't care what your daddy think about you or your mama think about you. It doesn't matter what the city say about you. You got cats lined up against you trying to eat like you trying to eat. And if you ain't convicted, they about to knock you out. Period. Because they don't got their mom and their daddy. Because they did come up in a foster care home system. Because they do live alone. And they not playing to be playing. They playing so they can get that paper. So they can take care of their mama. Take care of their daddy. Ain't no joke. You think it's a joke because you got your parents. Because you're not, you not convicted. Ain't nobody playing. I told you I was in the room. I was the only black man in the room. You don't get in that room on commitment. You get on conviction. It's the only brother. It's only two of us that got on the New York Times bestseller in the last couple of years. Only two black men. Ain't nobody giving away New York Times bestseller. The one dude hit 117,000 books sold in a week. I hit 100,000. Nobody playing. There's a level that you can't get to just because you see somebody else got to it. There's a level of success and a level of fame and a level of peace and prosperity you don't get to because you committed. And, and commitment again is you dope, but you only dope when you in the mood to be dope. You only do it when you feel good or you only do it when you see the benefits of it. May I remind you, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And Jesus had to go through a lot to make that conviction solid. And we're not going to always feel like it. And we're not going to always want to do it. And we're not going to always understand why God is asking us or coach is asking us or spouse is asking us or boss is asking us. We're not going to always understand. Jesus did not understand why God sacrificed him on the cross, but he did it anyway. Why? Because he was convicted to his father. And even though he didn't want to die on the cross, his relationship with God was so strong that whatever daddy wanted him to do, he wanted to do it. And Father, I ask that you would help us to get to that level right now. No more, no more, no more, no more, no more when we feel like it. everybody up here is committed. I don't think one person up here has not made a, a, a commitment or, or some level of sacrifice. But now you're asking for the ultimate sacrifice. Sacrifice your feelings. Sacrifice your way of seeing things. Sacrifice your flesh. And totally surrender to the most high. And so God, I just ask for help because we're going to need help. That we have an enemy. We have an enemy who seeks to kill, steal, and destroy. And as soon as we make this commitment, he's going to open up doors for us to go back to where we came from, to go back to some of the ways that we have that are not productive. And we ask right now in the name of Jesus Christ, you give us the power to, to stay true to this conviction. We love you. We praise you. We honor you. We adore you. We thank you for this invitation to go to another level. And as we see Olympians, Sacrifice four years for events that take seconds. May we also be willing to do whatever you ask us to do for years. So that in due time, Father, we can benefit you and benefit the kingdom. For we ask it as we ask for forgiveness of sin. Lord, bless us. Some of us are going through some, some, some real challenges. In our relationships, Lord, it's, it's, it's difficult. And our finances is difficult, Lord. Some of us are mentally and emotionally, we feel alone. We feel abandoned. We don't feel loved. We don't feel valued. We don't feel protected. We don't feel that we have a, a community of people looking after us or the person that is supposed to 
I'm not, Lord, show us that, 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 that's the role that you play. And that before Eve had Adam or Adam had Eve, Adam had you. There was no loneliness. Adam never said he was lonely because he had you. And so, Lord, help us who are going through whatever we're going through. Fix it, Jesus. Take that which is crooked and make it straight. That which is rough, make it smooth. That which is broken, mend it. And may our August not look like our July or our June or our April or our May or our, may this be the best month of our lives because we make a commitment and a covenant to you. We, may, we are convicted to you. And as a result, Lord, life is going to look so much different. We love you. We praise you. We honor you. We adore you. We lift you up. We magnify your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hey there, welcome to my channel, Motiv in Fresh Personal Growth Motivation. Today I speak, what will you sacrifice 2024? Do I just being real like I always whatever you know and no problems like with the whole like you no know, a little weight would fix and I was look problem I have never met CEO I have never been convinced with your body is the temple of living God it's temple of Holy Ghost I never, never convinced when I read it, I thought he was talking, had a spiritual conviction, praying of years, doors for over years, praying, going to church, don't I spiritual, but I never had a conviction to my body, I never rested, I never went on vacation, I never looked, just shut my brain i cannot for you i am from my wife cannot give you hard time i never was convicted of some of corbett people your wife time you giving away from families money i mean money no now i got to find foundation and government has a very